Hi, this is MXUX. I just have some first impressions of the uh, Q4 uh, ride uh, earnings call. I'm going to go over them here. I haven't gone over the call in detail. I have uh, taken a look at it and uh, kind of uh, sped through it. This is my first impression, but um, I have a couple points to make here. I'm going to go over it in more detail, the specifics of the call. But this was just the response I wanted to get out <clears throat> uh, as soon as possible after the call. All right. Uh, I'm going to talk about other videos now, and in the in in a little bit later, I'm going to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly from the call. <laughs> now these are some other videos on the call. Q's views. I like Q. I think he has valid points, and he's a a good analyst um, financially. Uh, and uh, I recommend his channel. I'm going to disagree with him slightly here, and just present a different point of view on the call uh the way i see it uh fox now one of the points that's been brought up is foxconn will own everything if lmc can't pay off any debt to them and foxconn would not mind this outcome uh this is a point more, more than one person is making here that uh, they may be working behind the scenes to you know uh, in a machiavellian way to take over lord's time motors could be true. I don't know. I personally do not think so. I have down here, of course, they will loan everything. It's an unsecured loan since they are selling the main asset, the plant. So, you know, it's an unsecured loan. If LMC defaults, the only way to get past it, uh, I mean, the only way to get this past, this whole deal past the uh, board of director, uh, directors over at Hanheim, at Foxconn, would be to have this, uh, you know, unsecured loan uh, backed by uh, whatever else they have. So I don't think that's that unusual of a term. It might be draconian, but under the circumstances. Anyway, I have down here, Foxconn is not rooting for LMC to fail. Uh, this is the first... Uh, uh, Venture into EVs. This is Foxconn's first venture in the EVs. Um, it is the vanguard of their corporate pivot. I have down here uh, into EV uh, contract manufacturing and EVs in general. To have them cannibalize their first EV client would be the worst executive decision ever. Uh, I think it's possible, but not likely. I I, I do not. I, I th I think uh, the reason they got involved with Lordstown was because of the plant, but also because of the hub motors. And this CEO has mentioned the, the hub motors as being very manufacturable and so forth. So they they get uh, the technology. And um, I just think this is possible, but not likely. Um, I, don't, I don't see this as an issue. But, of course, unknown, unknown, you don't know. But. This is my personal opinion on that. Uh, so again, unsecured loan, and are they doing this to take control of uh, Lordstown? I don't think so. It's possible. Uh, Lordstown will have to raise money to survive, and no bank will lend them money, and they will dilute shareholders with stock sales. Okay, valid point. Uh, Tesla... Tesla was two quarters from bankruptcy when they were in production hell on the Model 3, which was really their first mainstream product that was, you know, that didn't cost, uh, you know, $200,000. Uh, so being on a tightrope financially is not heard of, uh, unheard of among EV manufacturers. Uh, so I am shocked, shocked to see gambling going on here. I use that quote all the time. It's from Casablanca. This is is not unheard of, okay? Uh, perhaps not the point. Well, you know, hey, I mean, Tesla was... Look, Tesla was looking to bring out their first mainstream product. Lordstown Motors is looking to bring out their first mainstream product. 
Tesla was two quarters away from bankruptcy. Basically, Lordstown Motors is in almost the same boat. Okay? Maybe a little more wiggle room. So, um, deja vu all over again. Now, um, Tesla, perhaps not in the same timing. One of, and we're talking about ways to raise capital without diluting the stock. Um, one of the things uh, Tesla did and Lordstown Motors could do is uh, issue convertible bonds. Um, this uh, would uh, is something that uh, Chamath, I, I butchered his back last name, Pat Pete upon. This is how he invested in Tesla. And these were bonds that at maturity, whatever they were, five-year bonds, 10-year bonds, however they uh, set it up, uh, they, they could have a choice to be either recovered as cash or as stock. Chamath uh, bought the convertible bonds, and they converted the stock. He made a fortune. He's a smart guy. But I saw an interview with him, and I have a, I have a, a cut from this video in, in, one of my, in one of my previous videos. Uh, he felt that this was the, the best way to uh, mitigate the risk involved in uh, Tesla. Now, uh, Tesla had more assets, hard assets at the time. Uh, the Toyota plant in uh, in uh, California mainly, um, but uh, uh, you know LMC has valuable IP as as collateral. I mean, uh, I don't know how transfer of those rights are to to the Hub Motors, but they have that. They have been developing a lot of software, a lot of in car software, a lot of fleet management software. Um, you know, the traction control and so forth, uh, electronic stability control for the four-wheel drive system, the whole hub motor system and the manufacturing and the uh, suspension and so forth. So there are assets there. I would recommend that uh, Lord Sound Motors look into this. I'm sure, I mean, of course they have. Uh, another point they can do. They can uh, borrow against receivables. They can use their order book to finance production. And I have this potentially on a rotating, ongoing basis with Foxconn. I mean, uh, Foxconn is going to know their production numbers and their production forecasts. And, uh, excuse me, I'm, I've just gotten up here a little while ago. Um, so uh, they're going to be able to you know, have a pretty good insight into uh, uh, what uh, Lordstown is going to do sales-wise and so forth. So for them to uh, loan more money against uh, uh, on come upcoming sales or to do their contract manufacturing on a credit basis against uh, upcoming receivables, I mean, there's no end to the permutate, uh, permutations and combinations that can go here. I mean, if Foxconn wants to do this, they can do it, okay? This is a doable thing that wouldn't dilute stockholder uh, value as well. Um, LMC may have IP and technology. They can license to raise capital, as I mentioned before, the, the, the software and fleet software and so forth. Uh, LMC could take on a joint venture partner. Don't forget, General Motors owes 7% of ride, and they don't have a pickup truck coming out probably 2025. Uh, so that's one, of course, uh, a whale could come in, a Carl Icon. I'm not going to say that. Uh, I'm just suggesting it um, because of the relations between the CEO and him. But uh, as I said previously, I know Carl Icahn, in my opinion, would not invest in a company that wasn't in production. So maybe them going into production will uh, change uh, Carl Icahn's mind. I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm just saying, if you think about it, do a mental exercise, thought exercise. Try to do some remote viewing into the future. I mean, he's not going to question the management. 
the CEO, which is what Icon does. He goes in and fires the CEO first thing. This is his main man. So anyway, so these are just some ideas of how LMC could raise money without diluting stockholders. So there are possibilities here uh, with the stock price where it is and so forth and without any catalyst, you know, these may be more likely. I'm not sure. Just a point of view, another point of view. Uh, there's also mention here of Lordstown. There's a logo. Um, there was disappointment that Lordstown Motors will only produce 500 uh, vehicles in 2022 and 2,500 in 2023. Let me first start by saying they got an SEC and a DOJ investigation. Uh, I'm not. What I'm saying is, I'm sure these are conservative estimates. Okay. Uh, and they may be re totally realistic, but I'm, I'm saying, uh, uh, could they do more? Maybe. Okay, it depends how the ramp goes. The manufacturability of the Lordstown Endurance is such that there's, it's got the lowest number of parts of any uh, pickup truck, and the drivetrain has the lowest number of parts, and the assembly time should be the fastest. So, anyway... Is there wiggle room in these numbers? I don't know. Let's just take them at their word. Uh, I just wanted to pull up some other examples of other battery uh, electric vehicle manufacturers. Uh, Lucid started production. They said they're going to deliver 520 cars in 2022. Okay? So that's basically uh, the same as Lordstown. They say they're going to produce 20, 20K total. They never, if you if you watch their CEO, he never gives hard numbers. So they expect to produce 20K. I don't know. They're basically hand-building these cars right now. Uh, Rivian produced 1,000, so twice as many uh, trucks. They had unlimited, unlimited amounts of capital, you know, billions multiple billions of dollars of capital and they only produced uh, twice as many as uh, Lordstown Motors says they're going to produce. So uh, I don't think this uh, Lordstown Motors number is that disappointing. Uh, Rivian is still ramping up production and again Saranj or whatever his name is never gives hard figures. Uh, he's all you can watch his interviews. I have him quoted in other videos of mine, tap dancing around all kind of figures. Um, Ford is slowly ramping up production of the Lightning. It aims aims to produce fifteen thousand units in twenty twenty two. Aims to produce twenty twenty two. That's this year. I mean, that's what they do. You know, they've been in business for 100 years. Uh, so far, none of the 200,000 ordered units have been delivered. Uh, I, in the research I had done prior to this, they were having trouble securing batteries. It's not going to be any problem for Ford to produce uh, the truck because it's just an F-150. 150. It's the, the the body and the frame and everything is coming off the F-150 production line and going into this sub-assembly uh, area. I think they might be building a new plant, but I believe that's for their 2025 version of the Lightning, a total revamp of the Lightning, which shows you that the Lightning isn't a very good product. Uh, they're redoing the whole thing in 2025, but I heard they were battery constrained. Uh... The CEO, Jim Farley, says we don't have the staff, the, the brain power to produce, uh, the, to make these EVs. Will they produce 15,000 units? Hey, maybe they will. I don't know. Uh, in the first year of production, uh, Tesla made 2,400 Model 3 sed uh, sedans. So, I mean, you can call this the first year of production. The first full year of production is going to be 2023. So let's say uh, Tesla in their first full year of production made 2,400 vehicles. Lordstown's going to make 2,500. Basically the same number. Okay. Now, getting to these production numbers, 
Uh, it's important to note that GM will purchase uh, LMC's emission credits, and this is part of their deal. Uh, at seventy, so they're going to get a twenty-five percent discount on their emission credits. This is a source of income that everybody's missing at Lordstown. Tesla relied on this for years up until 2021. Okay, last year, they made more money from uh, emission credits than vehicle production. So uh, I think we should keep note of that. And, of course, they're going to get whatever nominal credits uh credit sales out of these nominal numbers but it's important to remember that this uh, this credit uh is uh, a key um income uh item that uh, people are overlooking um anyway yeah tesla relied on this until 2021 uh it made more money than their vehicle production the uh credits so anyway these numbers you know lucid 520 rivian 1000 well that's twice as many with unlimited money right slowly ramping up ford is well are they they can't even make 150s they got parts problems i don't know i heard the battery constraint they aim to produce 1500 units and they haven't delivered any yet so I do not think this is a terrible number, okay? And I do not think this is a terrible number either. And as I said, under the, you know, SEC and DOJ investigations, I'm sure that they're stating the most achievable numbers they have. But I don't know. Let's just say these are the numbers. All right, let's move on to the next item here. All right, this is the, the good, the bad, the ugly. The good, okay? The endurance has, uh, or will, very shortly achieve certification, ANITSA certification, homologation, crash testing. It's going into production. This is this is massive. This is massive. This is such a big deal. This is a new vehicle, a new concept, a new propulsion system, um, a new way of manufacturing. The whole thing, it's a big deal, okay? Um, and as soon as they roll the first production vehicle off, well, we'll get into that later. Another good thing uh, that everybody's overlooking they have a plant ready to make the vehicle immediately, okay? Ford is still struggling with setup. Lucid, they're building the cars by hand. Rivian, eh, they're kind of building the cars by hand. They only deliver to employees. I don't know what Rivian's doing. They can't open their new plant up. Okay? Lordstown has a plant. They're ready to go. They're staffed. They got people there. They got the plant. They got the paint shop. They got everything ready to go. They've been running off betas for, you know, I don't know how long. They're not hand building. Uh, okay, that's a big deal. Uh, LMC will be the first uh, electric vehicle to use hub motor propulsion. This is a first. This is radical. This is disruption. This is this technology is earth shattering, and they are making the motors. Okay, this is their IP. They have their exclusive rights to North America, and uh, they're the only ones that are going to use it. So this is, you know, this is major. So not only are they have they got homologation and certification, they're going to production. They have a plant. They have proprietary technology. This is so much better than Rivian. Rivian's using four off-the-shelf motors. So much better than Ford. Electromechanical differential. Blah, 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 airbag suspension, no solid rear axle. It's not really even a truck. You know, it's an SUV. Same thing with Rivian. Um, so this is a big deal. Uh, I am saying down here, uh, first delivery 2022. Now, I am thinking that they're going to make, you know, the first one they 
roll off the line. I don't know. Are they going to are they going to roll them off and say these are test vehicles? I don't know. But let's say by the end of the year, certainly they're going to make their first delivery to a paying customer. Massive, massive, massive catalyst. I mean, not only did they start the company, got the plant, did the design, invented the the uh, suspension and all the IP and all the software. Uh, they've made it despite all the hurdles and everything else and all the uh, horrible uh, short and distort uh, that took place. you got to remember, Lordstown was on, well on the road to success. There's two things that damaged Lordstown. Number one was the short and distort campaign, which is the same thing Tesla underwent. Uh, Tesla fanboys were more faithful and larger army than Lordstown. But you got to remember, uh, they didn't go under, they didn't, their stock didn't tank for any other reason but that short and distort report, which the day DOJ and SEC has got these guys, they're going to charge them with RICO charges. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, do a video on it. So remember, that's, that's why the, the, the downgrade of this stock. The second thing that happened is the frame suppliers who also su supply frames to other manufacturers uh, and the endurance is built on a standard truck frame. They told uh, Lordstown, I wonder why. Do you think their other OEM manufacturing clients told them, if you sell to Lordstown, we are going to find another supplier. You're going to be out of business. They jacked the price up so high for the frames to Lordstown that Lordstown had to put its own frame uh, development uh, department in, frame manufacturing department, which, by the way, is, as of the last details, going to be sold with the plant. I would like to see them keep that if possible, but looks like they're going to sell it with the plant. That's very expensive and very uh, precise work that has to be done. Uh, Schmidt uh, got that up and running. It is running to the best of my knowledge. It's a big deal. Uh, and the fact that they can produce, you know, like Tesla, they can produce what they need, okay? Uh, and with the GM parts catalog, I mean, uh, they're not going to have uh, this battle with these outside uh, suppliers. But in any case, um, they're going to make their first de delivery in 2022. Uh, also, as these trucks come rolling off the line, and I imagine soon, uh, with the web light, website update, uh, the EPA figures are going to be, the solid EPA figures are going to be published for the first time. Uh, the, spe the specifications, which kind of been all over the place, not really, but uh, are going to be established for public view. And I think uh, you're going to see that this is one of the most efficient uh, battery electric vehicles there is. Forget about being a truck. It's got the smallest battery, the longest range, the more 30% the more regeneration power than any other vehicle. Once these uh, specifications and EPA figures come out, I think people are going to be wowed by that. Uh, and uh, I think that should be a catalyst. And that's going to be revealed on the revamped website. And it's just going to be when they start production, I'm sure. After they start production as well, the production vehicle is going to be able to be reviewed. Now, the review game, the auto review game, is rigged, okay? Uh, the major manufacturers have all the reviewers in their pocket. They provide them with review vehicles. They put extra sound dampening and better suspension and all kind of special things in a vehicle and then they give it to the reviewers to review and then they tell the reviewers oh by the way if you give us a bad review uh you're never going to review another one of our vehicles so uh that's how the review game goes however i am sure there are going to be favorable reviews on the endurance uh and they may not come from the usual suspects but it is it is good technology, and it's 
I mean, I don't know. Based on my research, it's better than any of the trucks out there right now. And you could say the Cybertruck, which is going to be a big success, which will be coming uh, probably next year. It's a totally different vehicle. I mean, uh, I think it's more of an SUV than a truck. And it's a lifestyle vehicle. Uh, this is actually a working vehicle <laughs> with a solid rear axle. Anyway. It's more of a guy's guy pickup, okay? Um, and by the way, Sandy Monroe has said has mentioned. I, I have it in a video. You can look at it. Has mentioned the Hub Motors and has mentioned Lordstown. He again works for all the major OEMs. I'm sure he can't be too favorable to anyone. But anyway, the point is, there's a lot of good stuff here. A lot of good stuff. This certification, homologation, all this stuff. Wow. Wow. I mean, a lot of good stuff, okay? And uh, now they said the, these uh, production numbers damage. This, these production numbers are not bad, okay, in my opinion, okay? I would say they're, sta they're average, okay? Um, so I, I don't see that as a problem. Um, and what was the other one here? We'll have to save money again. You know, standard procedure for a startup. I mentioned all of this about Tesla. Um, this unsecured loan, I think the terms are what was needed to go by the uh, board of directors at uh, Foxconn. Uh, anyway, let's move forward. Uh, so that was the good. And I was answering the questions of other uh, videos. Now let's move on to the bad. Okay. Foxconn and LMC have not, have not reached an agreement on production and so forth. This entire venture hangs in the balance, okay? This is set up so that they got to do this agreement or everything falls apart. Now, I had Cephas down as uh, being a problem. That is, uh, you know, various government entities are going to look at it and make sure that this purchase is right for America. I think now with the invasion of Ukraine, uh, people talking about uh, problems uh, with uh, uh, Taiwan, possibly, or whatever you want to call the um, island there. I don't think CFIS is going to be an issue. The U.S. is going to support any any uh, Taiwanese-based company. However, uh, if this agreement doesn't go through, and how could it? I mean, you know, they're they got payroll. They, I mean, but this is an unknown unknown at this point. What what is the holdup? You know, what are the details? They're working out details. Well, what what's the details? I mean, this is critical. Again, I don't think Cephas is the problem, so there's some other something they're working on here that they aren't talking about. And I have down here, Fisker has announced uh, payer uh, production at Lordstown, and so has the uh, Han Hai CEO. So, I mean, it looks like the deal is done, but oops, wait a minute, put it in reverse. I don't know. Uh, not reached an agreement. Uh, and I have down here, LMC staff has moved to Foxconn. They have, you know, people on payroll, on Foxconn payroll at the plant. Um, so what is the holdup? Cephas, unlikely. Endurance uh, production has been announced. So that evidently is not not an issue. What What is the exact issue? I suspect... Royalties based on Foxconn worldwide dis distribution of the endurance. They're fighting over, you know, how much Foxconn is going to pay Lordstown uh, to sell this truck worldwide. I don't know. Possibility. Again, no factual support for this. Again, are they talking about maybe hub motor integration into the MIH platform? Um... Are they in negotiations for this? This would make sense. The CEO of uh, Han Hai did mention the hub motor. And I know uh, 
Hughes Viewers was talking about the MIH Motion and Harmony platform um, as being vaporware at the time. You know, they, I mean, they have done a lot of work on this, okay? Uh, it's not in production, but a lot of engineering has been done on it. Uh, a lot of organization has been done on it. There's a lot of people that have been organized to implement this uh, MIH platform. So it hasn't been executed yet. But, uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen in the future. But they have. there has been a great deal of effort has been put into this. Uh, again, Han Hai says this is the Android phone. Of course, they're going to make the Android phone. So this is really their platform. Uh, but they're calling it open source. Uh, Tesla publishes all their patents and so forth as well. But again, they don't put the latest patents out. But anyway, I don't know. Is that an issue? I have no idea. But I'm just saying possibility. We need we need to know, you know, what's holding up this agreement. You know, what are the details? And I doubt if we're going to get that information. Okay. Uh Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to go through the call with a fine tooth comb and see if there's any information in there, but that'll be later time. All right, so that's this is the main issue for me. This not reaching an agreement because everything is predicated upon them reaching an agreement. All right, the ugly cash is always a problem for LMC every startup, and you know, 500 million is always the magic number. I mean, uh, Q was mentioning 700 million but if you add 500 million to the what they have now that's 700 million this is 500 million is always what these car companies seem to seem to me need okay and that's the minimum needed it's just this is like you know this is what they need i mentioned all the solutions earlier uh you know whatever icon uh, convertible bonds, uh, sales uh, credit for uh, sales book, these types of things. And, of course, there's stock, too. How they can issue stock when the stock's at $2, I don't think that's possible. But there are these other avenues. And you got to remember, Lordstown Motors, uh, with all its faults, has zero debt. Zero on the balance sheet. So they may only have 500 million, but they got nothing in the deck column, okay? Uh, Foxconn intent, okay? And I think this is what uh, Q was mentioning. And again, I'm not, uh, Q does good analysis. I'm, I'm just uh, mentioning another point of view here. You guys got to do your own due diligence and figure out what you want to do uh, regarding ride stock. But. Uh, you know, the Foxconn intent, okay? Deal not done. Is this minor or major? Uh, is this LMC or Foxconn making the issue? That's, you know, is there Machiavellian evil intent here? I don't think so. But, I mean, who knows? I don't know. Um, so we got cash intent, you know, the deal not being done. Now, I have down here another ugly thing coming up. The Ford F-150 Lightning. June 2022. So that's a couple months away. Production is supposed to start. September 22, delivery is supposed to start. This is roughly uh, roughly the same schedule that uh, Lordstown Motors is uh, running. And I got to tell you, I think Rivian rush their launch based on what the previous launch date of the endurance was supposed to be to make sure they would be first okay and i think ford is also at least announcing this timing again to be a counter to the endurance because they want to just steal the spotlight I, these guys are afraid of the endurance they know this is a viable product and i think this is one of the strengths of lordstown motors this is a very viable uh product uh and if they use Hanhai to manufacture it this is going to be a, 
uh, a new product, uh, a new propulsion system, uh, and a new way of building uh, cars. I mean, they've been doing it in China for a long time, but let's say EVs, okay? Uh, anyway, I think uh, Ford is doing this, and I I am serious about this. Uh, to steal the lightning, uh, steal the lightning, supposedly, away from Lordstown Motors, okay? So, uh, but, you know, uh, endurance is more competitive with the lightning for fleets. Any, any fleet manager that uh, does the analysis that gets out a spreadsheet, you know, the endurance weighs less, less moving parts. You can change the motor in five minutes with hand tools okay um so on and so forth it's it's got you know thousands of less parts in it than the than the lightning uh i believe the lightning is going with the podge battery system uh the endurance is using the same uh, uh batteries as the model three um there's so many advantages to the endurance it's lighter, less tire wear, so on and so forth. Um, for a light to medium duty truck, honestly, the endurance is so much better than the lightning. And when I say light, the lightning weighs twice as much as the endurance. Just going with that and just going with the charging that in, that involves with, with the bigger battery, it, I'm not going to go on. Okay, Ford has altered the schedule and scope of their start several times okay so this may be delayed okay and by the way i have a clip i was going to make a video on it i'm not going to waste my time but the ceo you know they crucified steve burns for making sales es estimates i i went through and researched some clips about the ford ceo talking about estimates of sales and so forth for the lightning let me tell you he did the same thing burns did only he got away with it, you know what I mean? And then they gradually refined, refined, refined what they were saying, you know what I mean? He did the same thing, did exactly the same thing as Burns did, but he got away with it. I want to ask the SEC why that. And I want to ask the SEC when, when all these hard rules about announcing uh, new products came into being. Anyway, take a look at that for yourself. I was going to make a video about the Ford CEO statements on sales and projections for the Ford Lightning. I'm not going to, I don't know if I'm going to do it. I did the research. Um, now, here's another one about the competition with the Ford F-150 uh, Lightning. Now, their fleet version is uh, less than the Lordstown Motors uh, retail price. However, I think... Uh, just based on the analysis of the vehicle, I think it justifies the cost differential, okay? But here's the other thing. LMC hasn't used any EV sales credits. Uh, Ford sold 20, 27,000 Mustangs in 2021. This is, I don't have sales figures for 2022 or what they're going to be, but this is the estimate phase out of the EV tax credit in USA uh based on estimates i believe these are 2017 estimates but the point is unless this is revised ford is going to reach its 200k uh ev credit limit in q3 2022 according to evadoption.com now i don't know maybe you guys can update me in the comment if these uh, credits have been updated i don't believe they i don't i don't know if they i don't think they have I know they were trying to. I thought that was the part of the bill that was stopped. But in any case, uh, this could be a potential uh, potential balance weight against uh, Ford entering the market. Uh, and in any case, uh, as I said, I think the endurance is a superior vehicle. But anyway, those are the uh, the ugly things. Okay, so let's just go through a summary and conclusion here. Cash position was as, as I had estimated in the past, just plus or minus a little bit. It's, it was a little bit better, I, and uh, I uh, and as I said in that previous estimate, it should be enough to start production, just enough. 
Okay. So, uh, uh, but, uh, so that all, uh, basically worked out as I thought it would. Uh, now I have predicted previously that the first delivery to a paying customer will be a massive catalyst for the stock. And I still think that is true. When will that be? Don't know. Okay. Are they going to test the first vehicles off the line? I don't know. But that is coming. Okay. Uh, I think they have enough cash to start production. Uh, and they probably have enough cash to deliver at least a couple vehicles okay and that's without any raising of cash i think i'm pretty sure i have to go over my numbers again but with the cash burner and everything i think eh, that should be enough so they should be have enough cash to get in production and maybe deliver a couple of vehicles to a paying customer should be a massive catalyst for the stock should be a massive catalyst for fundraising all right i have down here we got macro events now um we get the oil prices shooting up with uh, the ukrainian issue i do not think oil prices are going to be going down i think that this could be the 1970s all over again uh because um the uh, illumination from uh, the U.S. and the NATO countries of the oil and gas supply out of uh, Russia is going to produce, uh, you know, higher prices until the United States can ramp up all its uh, fracking and so forth. So I think uh, bad news, good news, you know, bad news. But, you know, the move to EVs, especially by fleet com companies, I think is going to be even uh, more likely with these oil price hikes. And the, the ability to move to an efficient, uh, although slightly higher cost initial investment, but lower cost long-term investment, on replacing these ice vehicles i think this is something the fleets are going to do they're going to get out their spreadsheets and they're just it's 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 stupid simple you don't even have to be a math whiz to figure it out and uh you know this instability generally in the in in the macro market i think this is positive for uh, fleet ev sales and who knows maybe positive for military fleets okay and, um, you know, they were driving that military vehicle all around for Lordstown Motors. I don't know if uh, Foxconn being involved would eliminate them from that market, but it's something to think about. Here's something else. Now, Ride was driven down by a short and distort campaign, just like Tesla. And I've got a video I'm preparing to do on the short and distort and how it's working. You know, this may be a badge of honor for Ride. Uh, Tesla did the same thing. This is like Tesla kind of all over again, sideways. Very, very much like Tesla in a different area of the, uh, the market. But, uh, you know, it was always the short and distort. Okay? We got to realize this. Uh, they were very good stewards of their cash. Um had they not had this short and distort campaign against them, ride, uh, they would have been able to raise more capital to put in the frame shop, and that, that they would have never lost their stride in, in reaching production according to the original uh, schedule. But it was this short and distort uh, that hurt the company. Now, it's not the tech. So you got to remember, it's not the technology. It's not the truck. Uh, it's the market perception as far as the stock price goes. And and Tesla went through this same thing, okay? So, I don't know. Uh, I have down here, and I am not a financial analyst. This is a business case study. I have a disclaimer I'm going to read down here. You guys do your own DD. I had made a skinny bull case, and again, this is a business case study, not an investment study, okay? 
And, you know, when you do a case study, it's what if, you know, it's like remote viewing. You don't have a complete information. You're trying to make some assessment of a business. I have a chance of success of 51%. If, now the key here, and I'm going to stick with that, they got to get this agreement. They got to get this agreement. If they don't get this agreement, everything's going to fall apart. Uh, I'm going to listen to the call and comb through it for every little breadcrumb. But, I mean, this is the main issue I see right now. Of course, cash is an issue. Everything else is always an issue. But, uh, anyway, that's my, uh, and again, I wanted to get this out right away and kind of uh, give a counterpoint to some of the Q's views has, has his point of view on this Q has covered the company a long time I respect his uh, opinion I, I disagree with him though but that's in part why I did this but also I wanted to in general get out to the subscribers of my uh, channel um, the first impressions on this uh, earnings call and I and as I have done in the past I'll do a detailed uh analysis of it uh, uh in in the shortly uh but anyway just overall basically was i disappointed with it um the cash was just about where i thought it would be uh the start of production was just about where i thought it would be everything is where I thought it would be, basically, except I thought this agreement would be done. Uh, I thought it would be done, and it certainly should be done by April. Uh, this is the only thing uh, that doesn't fit into uh, my scenario. So, anyway, that's it. Now, here's the disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is a business case study on the myth of entrepreneurship in the USA. Rod is a high-risk investment that could result in catastrophic capital losses, a total loss of your investment. Okay? Seek professional advice before investing in stocks and securities. Do not rely on this information. Do your own due diligence. All right. This is MXUX. I hope you liked the video. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. More to come on this, and watch for my shortened, shortened.